We have an example problem here. A photojournalist's flash unit uses a 9-volt battery pack to charge a 0.15 microfarad capacitor, which is then discharged through the flash lamp of 10.5 ohms resistance when a switch is closed. The minimum voltage necessary for the flash discharge is 7 volts. The capacitor is charged through an 18 kilo ohm resistor. Okay, so we have two separate situations. We have a capacitor that can be attached to a 9 volt battery to charge and it's charged through a resistor of 18 kilo ohms. So when the capacitor itself, eighteen kilo ohms, when the capacitor is charging, it's attached to an eighteen kilo ohm resistor. And I'm sorry, there's quite the delay on my computer at the moment, so everything's taking a bit to show up. So while it's charging, this is essentially what it would look like. But then it says it's discharged, so we would have our same capacitor that was somehow connected across the 10.5 ohm resistor, which is the flash. So if you've ever seen a nice camera, sometimes they have the external flash, the light bulb to flash. Often it's a capacitor used to get that flash because the battery may not be able to provide enough current to get the power that we want out of the lamp. And so since a capacitor that is discharging does so quickly, we can get a quick current flow to get more power. Now, as far as this circuit might actually look, it doesn't really matter. We can look at the charging part independent of the discharging part. This is the same capacitor But if you would like to see a potential situation, we could have something like this, where we have the battery, and then the capacitor is in the middle, and there's a switch, where this switch could go left or right, depending upon how we set it. We would put the 18 kilo ohms over here, and the 10.5 ohms over here. So if the switch was connected this way, oh, I'll try to change color. If it was connected this way, we would have the charging circuit up here. There would be an open space so that current would not, <coughs> excuse me, so that current would not flow through the 10.5 ohm resistor. If we flip the switch, over to here, that disconnects the capacitor from the battery and leaves the left side open, and then current can flow through the flash lamp. All right, so our first question, how much time is required to charge the capacitor to the required seven volts? So in the problem, it told us the minimum voltage necessary for the, excuse me, the flash discharge. So in order to get the flash to work, this bulb to work the way we want it to, we need the capacitor to have at least seven volts across it. Okay, so part A, we're charging this capacitor and we want to get it up to seven volts. So part A is a charging circuit. The specific equation we have for charging on our test notes it's not technically the only equation we have, but 
specifically listed as charging is this one. But the values they're giving me are voltages, not charges. If you remember, for a capacitor, delta V for a capacitor is Q over C. If I divide both sides by C, this becomes delta V for the capacitor. Remember that Q max is C times the battery voltage. The C's would cancel. So the maximum voltage the capacitor can get to is the battery voltage. And so we can write an equation describing the voltage drop across the capacitor as a function of time. So here, we're trying to see how long it takes to reach the required seven volts. The battery is nine volts. I'm gonna leave the rest of this as e to the negative t over rc at the moment. I'm finding t. So here, I'm gonna divide by nine. And I know to get rid of the exponential function, I need it by itself. So I'm gonna bring e to the left, so it's not negative anymore. And the 7 ninths to the right. So 1 minus 7 ninths would give me 2 ninths. Now I'll take the natural log of both sides. That leaves me with negative t over rc is equal to the natural log of 2 ninths. I'm looking for the time. So time will be negative rc natural log of 2 ninths. We need to make sure we get the correct resistor value in here. Since we're talking about charging this capacitor, we need to use the 18 kilo ohms that it said it's charged through. So kilo is 10 to the three. C they gave us was the 0.15 micro farads. So oh, we're just plugging in. I'm getting 0 0.00406. So we have two sig figs. So 4.1 milliseconds. You could write it in scientific notation if you like that better. But we do need the 41. So technically, we could say 0 0.0041 seconds. That would be appropriate. That would work. The zeros are not significant. So 4.1 milliseconds. If you've ever um, bought like a disposable camera to use on vacation, um, for example, uh, I bought one before to use underwater. So when I go uh, snorkeling or something, you can take pictures that way without ruining my phone, though they do make plastic cases for your phone now. Anyway, if you used something like that, you may have noticed that you have to wait a little bit of time before you can take the next picture with a flash. You might be old enough to remember when that was normal we used to have to wait for those capacitors to charge up. Um, I do not even begin to understand all the technology be behind our phones. So they're awesome, I love my phone. <laughs> but anyway, we don't typically see this waiting period with our phones. All right, so part B, how much energy is released when the lamp flashes? if the capacitor had the total nine volts across it. 
Well, the energy, the energy is stored in the capacitor. A capacitor, its energy is one half C delta V squared is one way to write it. This is a good way to write it in this case too because we do have the capacitance. So one half the capacitance 0.15 micro farads, nine volts squared. So this energy that is released All right, let's see. I don't want to count zeros. Let me change my mode. Six point one. Huh. Okay, just a second. Let me plug that in again. Six point one times ten to the negative six micro. Nope, just kidding. The micro's already there. Joules. So if we had left it as just point one five instead of putting in ten to the negative six we would get 6.1 microjoules. <laughs> okay, not a whole lot of energy, but enough to light up that little flash bulb quickly. So part C, how long does it take for the charge on the capacitor to drop to 10% of its initial value. Okay, I'm gonna erase part of this picture so I can have the room to write. So part C. It wants to know how long does it take for the charge to drop? So the charge dropping means we have a discharging circuit. Charge increases in a charging circuit, it drops in a discharging circuit. So for our discharging circuit, we have the charge as a function of time is Q naught E to the negative T over RC. Now this problem doesn't specifically tell us what initial charge we're starting with, whether we charge to seven volts or nine volts, but it turns out it doesn't matter. So it's saying the charge is dropping to 10% of its initial value. So we're looking at the point in time when the charge is 0.1 Q naught. 0.1 Q naught is the charge at the time we're looking for. When we plug that in, interestingly enough, Q naught cancels. So it doesn't actually matter how much charge it started with, just that it's discharging. When the Q naughts cancel, we have E, the exponential function by itself already. So I can go ahead and just take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of 0.1 is gonna equal negative T over RC. We're looking for time again. So this resistor, though, has to be the resistor we're discharging through, the 10.5. It's the same capacitor. So 
So this time, I'm getting 3.6 microseconds. Very fast, a lot faster than the charging part. But that's also because we have a much smaller resistor. So all of our problems that are RC problems are going to either be discharging or charging. So discharging, the charge is decreasing, it's dropping, there's no battery attached anymore. Charging means there is a battery. We started with no charge, so the charge is increasing with time. And then we do sometimes have to go back and use equations that we knew for capacitors and or resistors as we go.